Welcome back everyone, Jake here. In this video, we're gonna continue talking about trading options and specifically the advanced options trading strategy, the Iron Butterfly. Now to trade the Iron Butterfly, you need to be approved for vertical spreads with your broker. So make sure that you have the appropriate level approved. If I already lost you by saying vertical spread, then definitely check out my playlist on trading options. I've got 37 videos here for you guys. So I keep making these videos because options are pretty interesting. And if you really want to understand the Iron Butterfly, it might be beneficial to watch my video on the iron condor. So, because uh, they're very similar in that with an iron condor, your short call strike price and your short uh, put strike price are, are spread wide apart. But with an iron butterfly, you're going to bring them together to maximize the amount of premium you're collecting in the center. So, by the end of this video, you will completely understand this profit and loss diagram. Now, the Iron Butterfly is just a bear call credit spread and a bull put credit spread uh, put together sharing the same strike price for your short leg that you're going to be selling. Why do we sell credit spreads, uh, bear calls and bull puts? It's to collect premium. If the share price of a company trades perfectly sideways, you're making money by the value of contracts slowly wasting away over time. This is theta decay. So we sell credit spreads hoping that sometimes the share price of the company doesn't move. So let's build the iron butterfly using the graph and then we'll use real numbers in example. So first we're going to build the call side uh, with a bear call spread at the money. So normally with a credit spread, I would want to go a little bit higher. So there's less of a chance of being assigned, but with the iron butterfly, you go straight for it. You go basically right at the money or where you think the share price will be at expiration. So we're gonna sell a call here. And if you don't have 100 shares, this is a naked call. Your broker doesn't like this. Your losses are theoretically unlimited. So to cap your losses, you have to buy a long leg. You're gonna buy a call for a higher strike. You just created your first credit spread uh, for the Iron Butterfly. Now to build the other side, we now need to sell a put and buy a put. And the Iron Butterfly is, is unique because you're gonna double up. When you sell a put, you're trying to maximize premium, so you're going straight at the money. And uh, this is going to be your short leg. Now, once again, your losses are very high if the share price moves against you. If you don't have the collateral to buy 100 shares, this is a naked put, your broker probably doesn't allow it. So you're gonna cap your losses by selling a put at a lower strike price. You've now created a range between the call that you bought and the, uh, the put that you bought. So how do you make money on an iron butterfly? Well, you need the share price by expiration to stay within a certain range. There's actually another line right here and another line right here that are your break evens, which is the net credit you're receiving. So you're receiving a credit for selling a call and selling a put, and then you're paying back a little bit less to buy a call and buy a put. So whatever your net credit is, uh, it's the width of the strikes, minus that net credit received. That is your maximum loss. Your max gain is just the net credit received. Now, because the share price uh, is probably not going to expire or finish directly on this line at the money for the call and the put, you're gonna be assigned on one of them. So to get that max gain, it's, it's very unlikely. To calculate your break even on the upside and the downside, it's just uh, the short strike here plus or minus the net premium for all of the all of the contracts. If you're still confused, don't worry, let's do an example. And I think right now doing an iron butterfly on JP Morgan Chase would be a really good option. It's been trading within this ra range uh, going sideways for basically six months. Now the 200 day moving average is moving up and sometimes the share price of the company will shoot up once it uh, the 200 day catches up to it but I don't think that's gonna happen in the next two weeks. So I'm looking to sell an iron butterfly on JPM over the next two weeks with a, a strike basically at 155 or 160. So I'm in my broker with Charles Schwab and we're going to do a couple things. The first one is we are going to select the expiration date of September 17th. That's in like two and a half weeks. Let's add uh, 16 strikes around the current share price 
and I'm gonna turn on the Greeks so I can reference delta for fun. So to build this, I'm gonna say that my short strike, which is at the money, is basically 160. If JPM in two weeks, two and a half weeks, can stay close to 160, I can make as much money as possible. So we're going to select here and select here. And I've, I've added those two uh, to uh, basically build the iron butterfly for the short legs. But now we have to choose our long legs. And I'm gonna choose a width on either side by $5. So we'll select this one for 165 and we'll select this one for 155. Now, which are you selling to open? Which are you buying to open? The ones closer to the current share price are the ones you are selling to open for an iron butterfly. And the farther out ones are the ones, these are your long legs, that you're buying to open. And as soon as I plug all these in, Charles Schwab immediately recognizes what I'm doing. It even tells me, hey, this is an iron butterfly. So when we go to the trade window to review this, uh, let's just think about exactly what's happening here. We're selling a call at 160, basically at the money. For a credit, we're receiving $3 or $300. We're also selling a put at the money for 257. So we're getting $557, but once again, this is a very risky trade if the share price shoots up or shoots down. So we gotta cover ourselves. So we're going to give back 106 on the put side and 108 on the call side. Let's go ahead and just make this a market order to simplify it. So it's, it's saying here that we can get a credit of 343. Now that is our max gain if the share price finishes exactly at 160 and basically nothing is in, is in the money. With Iron Butterflies, that isn't gonna happen. If we click on Trade and Probability Calculator, it might give you a graph. Uh, once again, reviewing here, max profit 343, max loss 157. And actually, if we go back to the option chain real quick, we can think about what is the probability of it hitting below 155. According to the Black-Scholes formula, it's saying 23%, or going above 165, once again, the delta is 25%. So there's almost a 50% chance that it's gonna blow past 165 or fall below 155. So you kinda have to weigh, what, what's your probability of success here uh, taking in all of these strikes. Now you might be thinking this is a lot of work to do for just $343. If you want to basically up all these and have 10 iron butterflies on JP Morgan Chase, there's nothing stopping you from increasing the, uh, the number that you're buying to 10 of all. And now if we look at the trade and probability, we could potentially make $3,430 in two and a half weeks or potentially max lose 1,570. So let's go back to the profit and loss diagram and use all of our real world numbers from the JP Morgan trade. So the strike that we're choosing for both our short call and short put was 160. And the uh, long call is 165, the uh, long put is 155. So it's $5 on either side of the uh, short strike price. Our max profit, based on all of the buying and selling between the four contracts, is 343. Our max loss is 157. So that's a pretty good ratio, I think, uh, based on the probabilities. So what is our break even? You can calculate it by taking $3.43, which is the net uh, credit, subtracted from and added to the short strike call strike price. So 160 plus 343, and uh, 160 minus 343. So as long as the share price of JPM finishes between 15657 and 16343 by expiration, then at least I'm positive. I'm, I'm not losing money on this iron butterfly. But if it goes above or below my two break-even prices, then I start losing money. However, once I hit uh, below 155 or above 165, doesn't matter where the share price goes to, my max loss is 157. Okay, I think you guys understand what the iron butterfly is at this point. Let's talk about the problems. And one of the problems with the iron butterfly is you're gonna get assigned. The chances of this finishing exactly on the dime of 160 isn't gonna happen. 
So by expiration dates, you're either going to get assigned on the call side or assigned on the put side. So for that reason, if you do trade an iron butterfly, I highly recommend you close all of your positions, ideally for a profit, but even for a loss. Close everything uh, before the Friday where your contract expires. Otherwise, if you hold it into expiration, once again, with long legs and short legs needing to be exercised, things can get a little weird. Now, something you can do if you do trade an iron butterfly is you can exit one of these legs early. So if the share price of the company is trading within a range, it's, it's you know slowly going up and then going back down, but it's still kind of hovering around 160, it might be beneficial, like if the share price is at 156, to just close your call side credit spread. It's not a big deal. And then a couple days later, maybe it's up here at 163. Well, now it's a good time to close your uh, put credit spread for a profit. So you don't have to commit to the entire iron butterfly all the way till expiration. If the share price of the company is just kind of trading in this range around 160, you don't want to get unlucky by at expiration. It just happens to be 157 when two days ago, maybe it was 162. So as you get closer to expiration, definitely just use some common sense here and feel free to close out one of the two legs uh, to try and get the most premium possible. Okay guys, that was the Iron Butterfly. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. If you have any comments or questions or requests for other options trading videos, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care.